If you have photosensitivity issues, you might not want to watch this because there's a quite a bit of flashing images. But uh, with that out of the way, let's talk about Neo Dash and welcome back to Let's Try. Uh, also, just so you know, there is a giveaway in this video. I'm going to display a uh, Steam code across the screen at some point. That's to weed out bots. Um, so if you're watching this video, and it's not very long, um, but uh, if you're watching it, you will uh, eventually see a code for a, his, um, a Steam copy of Neo Dash. So what is Neo Dash? Well, Neo Dash basically is a um, obstacle course type time trial racing game. Um, it's really cool. I th it it kind of reminds me of games like F-Zero X and Distance to an, a degree, but uh, I've seen a lot of comparisons to Distance. I think aesthetically it is similar, but I think um, gameplay wise, they're not not quite to the same in, in, in some respects. Um, I feel like Neo Dash um, has a bit more of a flow type of, of uh, racing, whereas Distance is a bit more about um, switching from like one type of movement to another. There's a little bit of that in Neo Dash, but it, it feels a bit more, um, I don't know, like linear in a way. But uh, in any case, Neo Dash is, uh, is really cool. I mean, it's obviously a very visually interesting game um, is well like it's it's got like probably three or four different shaders going on at any one given time um, I think it is in the unreal engine which uh, generally I, I, I you know I know there's a lot of talk about engines these days but unreal engine games tend to be very pretty um, but yeah neo dash is no different in any case uh, I had a lot of fun with this game it's it is a lot of fun to just like see if you can get your uh, fastest time or just like you know weave between obstacles and and avoid uh, you know giant buzz saws it's it's a lot of fun and the uh, the major mechanics are basically um, boosting obviously uh, drifting and then also switching from your car mode to kind of hover mode um, I will talk a little bit about uh, how you know the speed works in this game i say the speed so you have your major boost and uh as far as i could tell and i did play quite a bit of this game but as far as i could tell there's not really a lot of ways of gaining boost um as far as i could tell you you gain boost from drifting and so if you're drifting and boosting at the same time you're going to be uh you know gaining momentum uh and that's that's pretty risky because you can't be drifting all of the time uh drifting is always going to be um, something you're able to do better on curves than you are in a straight line. This actually poses kind of a mechanical problem in the game because uh, while you are trying to, you know, navigate the obstacle course as fast as possible, behind you is the course being automatically destroyed. Basically, you could look at it like a, almost like a Fortnite or Battle Royale-esque, uh, you know, wall that's descent like ascending towards you you can actually see in the bottom corner there uh how your distance towards or distance between you and and this wall that's like constantly moving towards you this is um it's uh, been said a couple of times in the reviews but i i actually kind of agree that this is a mechanical issue in the game because it feels a little bit arbitrary in a game where you're already trying to move as fast as possible uh in theory that is the fun of the game to also have a kind of an arbitrary constraint of like, well, you're new, you're not moving fast enough though, so we're gonna kill you, uh, and that t tends to happen quite a bit. Here's your Steam code, by the way, um, flashed across the screen. If you uh, first come, first serve, whoever can grab that will get a copy of Neo Dash. Um, besides, you know, despite my criticism of this uh, weird arbitrary constraint constraint i actually really do like the game and i have a suggestion or at least a, an idea for how it could be fixed i feel like if it didn't destroy the road and instead moved kind of past you similar in like let's say a fortnite or a battle royale where you can be outside of the gate then you would survive so long as you beat it towards the end of the course like actually get through to the end of the course without uh without being behind that that kind of constraint and that would um, encourage the player to keep ahead but also give the player a better indication of like how in danger are they because right now aside from the thing at the bottom which you're never going to look at and in fact I never noticed 
that little bar at the bottom until I was editing the game. Um, the only thing that you know tells you that you're in danger is this kind of annoying beeping and flashing uh, warning sign that yeah there's this thing that's right behind you. And that's not as interesting to me as like say uh, some kind of visual uh, to indicate how in danger you are. Like for instance, if you could see like the, the ground is like kind of crumbling underneath you or something like that. I know that's not, not a simple thing to fix, but anyway. Um, outside of that, uh, Neo Dash is a lot of fun. I mean, you're gonna be weaving through a lot of stuff. You're gonna be um, trying to get those, those curves as tight as possible. And um, uh, occasionally you're gonna be flying off the road and hovering into basically the void. Kind of leads me to my second criticism, which is that I occasionally cannot see where I'm supposed to go next. You can see this uh, this level here is a great indication of that. They deliberately put in this kind of fog to, to you know, um, not stop you, but make it difficult to see your next obstacle. And I don't know if that really works in favor of the game because I'm, I'm always going to want to see what I'm where I'm driving into. This tends to lead into a little bit of a trial and error situation where you have to play an obstacle course a couple of times before you can uh, actually beat it. But I don't necessarily dislike that because the game is fun and I don't even really mind dying in this game because it can lead to some really interesting situations where you're like very narrowly curving around an obstacle or through an obstacle and then you know, get cut in half by a laser and you know, oh, that sucks, but like also that was rad as hell. So uh, I did really, this 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 level here was, was really kind of fun um, and I had some interesting situations, but you know, like weaving around these obstacles is a lot of fun. Um, I will say, you know, I, I was concerned a little bit about uh, how, I don't know how to put this, how the tactile feeling of the game was going to feel. Like, y you know, uh, the danger with this kind of game is it's going to be very rigidly kind of, um, you know, coded in, in a way that it makes like it makes you feel like you have no actual physicality in the room, in, in the game. Like you, you don't, you're not actually driving on a road. I guess the best way to um, compare it would be like something like a Sonic Adventure, where it's like all of these obstacles all of these curves all of these things are kind of like hard-coded and you don't actually have any presence in that world you don't you're not actually driving on the road you're just kind of the game is making you feel like that that you are um but i do actually really appreciate in neo dash that you do have that physicality you do have that kind of tactile presence of like yeah um you're you're on the road right now and you do kind of stick to it like glue but even a small curve can like kind of fly you off a little bit and then you you really have to be on your toes uh on on the kind of the the dash or the the hover um hovering mechanic to to get you back on the road and it can lead you to some really interesting situations you're gonna see there that's that's you know maybe you've seen it a couple of times how uh that's uh, the, the the road destroying or getting you know creeping up from behind can lead into like you just died and uh it's it's a probably the least satisfying way to die or to lose in this game because it, it doesn't feel necessarily very uh con i guess constructive because it's sort of the game just saying well you weren't fast enough and you know i i i'm led to with the occasional question of well how could i have been moving faster i was literally um, mashing the dash or the, the the boost button like the entire time so I don't really see or understand how I could have been moving faster the game does give you the hint or the tip that you can like um, drift around corners or drifting will, will give you more speed but you know in a lot of situations like this for instance where you're just in a, on a straight road drifting doesn't seem very tenable so but like I say um, you know Besides that, the the you know when you get to when you get to a level where you're you're just kind of enjoying yourself, uh, you're enjoying the the obstacle course, the the weaving. Uh, like I I really like basically any of the levels that have like a half pipe on it or even a full pipe is a lot of fun. That's like some of my favorite stuff from like uh, you know F Zero is any any racing game that lets me like uh, you know drive right around a, in a, the inside of a tube is just a lot of fun to me so uh, I don't I don't mind it for the the, the occasional gripe 
and um, you know it's very rare, honestly, where I discover or you know come across a level in Neo Dash where I'm like, well, this is uh, kind of falling apart for me a little bit. Um, this is I've included this footage as an example of that, basically of like, well, I don't really know what I'm supposed to do. There's a lot of uh, you, you just kind of have to keep going as fast as possible and. In the end, I did eventually beat this level, but I'm still not sure how I did because, you know, like, basically I was always boosting as fast as possible and I still felt like I almost had died, but anyway, I did do it eventually. So, uh, you know, in the end, there's a level editor as well. I didn't play any player-generated uh, levels. I figured there weren't going to be many or any. Um, because the game is basically brand new and there is a way you can you can basically you can play other players levels and then rate them so I think that there's going you know there's a little bit of uh, built-in future proofing to make sure that the game has a, some longevity there is a, a lot of like built-in levels already I think it's like over 30 uh, tracks and you know they're all they all have a lot of variety in them, so like you know, you will have a lot of fun in this game. And then you have the added, like you can jump into the level editor and try making your own track, and uh, that, that you pro that's probably a lot of fun. Um, and then besides that, there's also I find this kind of curious. Once you're done, uh, you've gotten a bunch of points from uh, you know, beating all of these tracks or you know winning. Uh, and even there's also like the, the occasional secret hidden hard level that gives you like an extra red currency uh, that you can use to buy customizations for your car. I find that to be a kind of a curious addition in this game because I'm not sure like it, there isn't much of a multiplayer aspect to it at least uh, not that I could see yet. Um, I, I think I think it's in, in either in planned or there's a local multiplayer aspect, but. Um, I just I find it uh, kind of interesting that you can customize your car to such a um, wild degree, considering it, it's this is probably the the kind of game you're going to play on your own more more than likely. But in any case, if you enjoyed this, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing. And, and congratulations to whoever managed to grab that key. Um, I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy. Thank you.